Hi everyone. I had recorded uh, a video for today and as I started writing the article for the video I realized I was going in a completely different direction. So I, uh, you know, I, I show up, uh, I'm strict with showing up, lenient with results, so I decided to, hey, why don't I just re-record a new video and the easiest way to do that before my nine o'clock appointment is just do a Facebook Live. So here I am, I've already written the article, you can see the article uh, linked in the notes of this video, but let me just kind of quickly summarize what the article is so that you can get a sense of it. The idea is that when you are building an authentic business, um, by definition you're doing something unique, right? Uh, you, even being a life coach is pretty un still kind of unique in the world. Uh, you're not, your, your service is not as uh, people aren't used to buying life coaching yet. People are used to buying therapy, right? Psychotherapy or marriage family counseling, that kind of thing. People aren't used to buying relationship coaching yet. People aren't used to buying energy healing yet. They're used to, you know, maybe going to a naturopathic doctor, maybe. They might be used to that. So the, the problem that, that one of the problems you're, you're trying to solve in your business is the fact that you need to fit into people's buying patterns. Right, and they're like, "Why? Well, I, I like you, but I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have any money to spend on life coaching. It's just not. I have money. I just don't have money to spend on life coaching because I think I could just talk to a friend. Isn't that life coaching right there? You know, and so here are three uh, kind of major pieces of the puzzle to figure out in your business in order to be able to get clients on cons on a consistent basis. The first piece of the puzzle is trust. You need to do. You need to do things that allow your audience to say, I like you, I, I trust you, your expertise, and so how, do, how does that happen? Because otherwise they won't uh, even think about buying from you. And a couple of ideas of, of trust. Something that I talk about all the time and I, I try to model is creating authentic, relevant, consistent content. If you show up as yourself uh, with no pretense, as little pretense as possible, um, and just be your honest, be as true to yourself as possible, be as you as you can possibly be. You build trust with your audience because they can see that you're being authentic. Um, if you show up on a consistent basis, consistency equals reliability in your if, if I'm consistent, you feel like I'm reliable, which it's true, isn't it? Consistency is your own reliability and it's in, in the eyes of your audience, you're more reliable. Um, and and a relevance means that as you get to know your audience better, you find out what they are needing and wanting from you, and you create content to meet their needs. Of course, they're going to trust you more. Okay. Another way of getting uh, trust is by having good visual branding. That's something that I'm weak on, you know. But but some people have really great branding. They can immediately tell. Wow, it looks awesome and looking awesome, looking great, looking sharp, looking polished, builds trust instantly. Now. And another way, of course, is, is through endorsements. Uh, good reviews, recommendations from people they trust. Now, these are different factors that you don't have to be great at all of these. You can just pick one or a few of these and try to become the best at it that you can be. And that will uh, allow you to build trust. So for example, uh, you, I've, you may have heard me say this before, visual branding is not my thing. I'm just, I just honestly don't have enough energy to work on my visual branding. I just don't have enough energy for it. But what I do have energy for is creating authentic, relevant, consistent content. You know, and, and I don't even really have energy to get a lot of endorsements from my clients and, and my colleagues. I don't, you know, kind of don't have the energy to, and here's my cat here. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, and I have about a minute left before I have to go to my next meeting. I can be a little bit late there, but, but, uh, but yeah, so, so, so focus on the, the, the ways of building trust that are natural for you. And the second major piece is alignment. You, even if your audience has, has uh, trust you, you need to be offering something that they get, that they are accustomed to buying. Life coaching, they, they're, not accustomed, they're not accustomed to it. The energy healing, they're not accustomed to it. They don't, they, if they haven't bought it before, they don't have a friend who's bought energy healing. Why would they decide to spend money on energy healing? It's it's new to them. So how do you get them to spend something money on something they've never spent money on before? And I've given you I've, I'll give you a bunch of ideas in the article that's attached to this video. But one of the ideas is start selling something that they're used to buying. They're used to buying a book. They might be used to buying an online course or an audio book. So 
package your skills into a book or an audio book or an online course. That's something they've heard other people buy before. They've never bought energy healing. They don't know anybody who's bought it, but they've bought books before, you see. And so when, once they buy something from you, they're more likely to buy other things from you, okay? So that's just one idea, and I'll give you more ideas in the article attached. The third major piece of the puzzle is invitations. If you aren't inviting your audience on a regular basis to your offerings, how will they be able to say yes? That's one of the problems I see a lot of you are having is you just don't invite your audience often enough. They don't even know what you offer. You think they do just because you know what you offer, but your audience doesn't live in your head. And so you need to let them know often enough, this is, I'm ready to have you hire me. I'm ready to have you buy this program, this service. You know, and to and to make an invitation without attachment. That's the other that's the other key piece. Because if you're attached, then you become resentful. So that's the art of giving a generous, open hearted invitation out of a sense of service, knowing that in the long term, if you build enough trust, if you build enough alignment, and if you do enough invitations, they will, of course, have a chance and they will say yes. The people who are right and meant for your services will say yes. So I hope this is helpful. I got to go to my next meeting, but I wanted to be sure I met my deadline of 9 a.m. content for you Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, here on Facebook at least. And again, I've written the article, so go and look at the, 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 the link here and enjoy um, the ideas and let me know if you have any questions. All right, be well. And Mango says hi, and we'll see you later.